Hello, this is Kerry Schutz with MathWorks. In this video, I'm going to talk about using frames in Simulink, how they can be very useful, but how they can also be very tricky. And that applies to both experienced uh, and inexperienced users. There's a lot of documentation on this topic of frames and frame-based processing. I've included a couple of them here. If I were to jump over really quick into the documentation, I'll just pull uh, that top link up. Uh, this is actually going into the doc itself, but our documentation is online, so you can access it uh, after installation or on, you know, by just Googling it. So it talks about the sample and frame-based concepts, of which we're going to be talking about which blocks support sample and frame-based processing. Um, and then it goes, you know, gives some words and pictures together to kind of help you visualize uh, what these two um, terms mean, as well as going into some of the benefits of using them. So I'm not going to drag you through uh, the doc on the topic, since you can read that at your own uh, leisure, what I want to do is get more into my own spin of it and also my own examples. So first of all, the what on frames. Frames are a collection of like samples equally spaced in time. That's simple enough, but it's how you interpret these samples that is the key. And it can also be kind of the hard part or the, or the tricky part, um, as it were. And we'll get into more of the details of that later. So why we would why, why would we use frame-based processing? Well, the motivation is typically twofold. Um, your real-world signal that you're starting with, you don't, you don't have any choice. It is itself uh, contains more than one sample. It's a packet or an image, a collection of samples. Or maybe uh, you're trying to simulate, uh, trying to just accelerate your simulation. And the key here is with frames is you are amortizing the simulation overhead across a frame or a collection of samples instead of having that overhead applied to every single sample. Your speed up factors, of course, uh, will vary wildly. It's that old, your mileage will vary um, uh, idiom. So best practice here is to start with sample-based processing. It's simpler, uh, get the right answer, um, use that as a reference, and then move on to the more complicated use case of frames where the upside could be greater, but there could also be downsides. Things to remember about frames, frames have multiple personalities. That's the number one point I want to emphasize, which means there are multiple possible right answers when using frames. For instance, do you want a single channel with eight samples per frame equally spaced in time? That would be one interpretation of an eight by one vector in Simulink. Or do you want eight channels with one sample each all concurrent in time? That would be the multi-channel case. Again, both of those are eight by one vectors in Simulink. Same signal, different interpretation. That is the source of confusion, that the primary source of confusion people encounter when using frames. It is the user's responsibility to interpret and disambiguate between those two interpretations. Uh, frames only apply to fixed step discrete time signals. So sorry, you know, analog or analog mixed signal users, uh, the signal does have to be sampled in a discrete time sense before you can apply this frame-based concept. Frames can lead to algebraic loops, which can slow down simulations or prevent it from running at all. That's something to be aware of. An algebraic loop is a zero delay loop, a physical impossibility, uh, but it's easy in a simulation environment to uh, create a, such a thing. And yet you, you wanna be sure to avoid them at all times anyway. Uh, and so you wanna make sure you have your warnings and errors to detect algebraic loops in your model. And then it'll let you know. Uh, the good news is that you can work around these things and, um, you know, speed the model back up, but it just takes some know-how in order to do that. The good news is uh, there are these monolithic filter blocks in DSP system toolbox, like for instance, the biquad filter block. They don't suffer simulation slowdowns due to algebraic loops when you're using frame-based processing. So those are always great starting points before you go off and implement your own custom based, you know, primitives based uh, filter implementation. More on frames, uh, frame-based processing versus sample-based processing, these two processing concepts in Simulink, it applies both to computation and visualization. You might think it only applies to how you compute on a signal, but it also applies to how you visualize it. We're gonna see that today. Um, frame-based signals, well, no such thing in Simulink. People use that terminology, but there's actually no such thing. It's, there's frame-based processing, it's how you interpret, again, the signal. It's the receiver that determines whether it's a, you know, this eight by one vector is a multi-channel thing or a multi-sample frame. Simulink signals themselves are always either scalars or vectors. 
but they lack any sort of frame property. Okay, again, the receiver does that interpretation. Bottom line, frames can provide very nice acceleration benefits. Not always. Again, you have to do careful benchmarking. If you need to, you know, use another trick to speed it up, you, you may have to do so. Uh, you need to know, obviously, what you're doing when using frames are a little more complicated in sample-based processing. It's easy to get the wrong answers or simulation slowdowns and not even be aware of it. And that is the motivation behind uh, these videos on this important topic of frame-based processing in Simulink. All right, so let's jump over into some live hands-on at the time we have remaining. And I'm going to start off with a sine wave. Uh, Sorry, you always, it's always a nice starting point. You notice I'm going to pick out the DSP system toolbox sine wave, not the continuous time uh, simulink sine wave. So again, this discrete time signal processing concept. I'm also going to pull in a scope to visualize that, that sine wave. And that's really all for starters. I'm going to just customize the parameters on this sine wave a bit. I'm going to up the sample rate to 48 kilohertz, something audio like, and I'll increase it to a one kilohertz sine wave. Unit amplitude, no phase offset, and we're going to start with sample-based processing. Samples per frame equal one. I'm going to run this simulation for two milliseconds. That would be two cycles of our one kilohertz sine wave. I'm going to hit the play button. And yes, we did see a two cycle oversampled by 48 times uh, one kilohertz sine wave. Okay, so that part all makes pretty good sense. Now let's complicate it. I'm going to just create a copy of this. In fact, before I do so, I'm just going to enumerate this. I mean, you just use one based enumeration. So I'll call this scope one, sine wave one. I will also just show this so we can always see. I'll turn format, show block name on. I will just drag and copy. Now we got sine wave two, scope two. It's identical to the first pair, but I'm going to change it and make samples for frame four. Typically, you would use something much bigger if you were trying to speed up a simulation. In this case, it's more illustrative if I just use a smaller frame size. All right, let's go ahead and bring up that second scope. It appears overlaying right on top of the first. I'll drag it down so we can see both. Let's hit the play button. And now, well, we see the first same sine wave on scope one, but on scope two, we see something that, well, it looks like a one kilohertz sine wave-ish, but it's definitely not what we probably expected. Um, so what's happening here? It's still one kilohertz ish, but what's all of these colors and steps in the waveform? Well, the short answer is this is a four channel interpretation of the signal in the scope. This is a single channel interpretation of the sine wave on the scope. So if we turn on our legend, we can see that we've got four channels all running in parallel, all sampled in parallel. You also notice that the sample rate looks different between this waveform and this waveform. The uh, the overlaid multi-channel signal has a slower sample rate back to by a factor of four by the number of channels compared to this one. You notice in the model, I also have colors on. These are very helpful. I can turn them off or I can turn them on. And it says, indeed, <clears throat> the top one here <clears throat> has an update rate on the signal of 48 kilohertz. While the bottom signal has the slower 12 kilohertz frame rate update because in simulate the colors correspond to the frame update rate not the sample individual sample update rate i also have on here you see uh signal dimensions turned on that's right here under information overlays i just clicked on signal dimensions and we can see that i could turn it off if i if it got too cluttered okay so that's really the difference. You have to be careful. The scope is taking the same signal, effectively, the same sine wave, same sample rate, same everything, but it's interpreting it different and displaying it differently. Well, the good news is if you want to interpret it differently, the user is in control and they say, well, don't interpret, they, to interpret that a frame-based signal as four parallel channels, interpret it as one uh, serialized channel. Okay, we could do that. Or again, we'll change it back and say, here we go. And there we go. So now, now do these individual <clears throat> samples uh, make sense? Well, in order to see that they do, I'm going to probably need to zoom in on the original deserialized waveform. You see that it has values of like 0, 0.1 something, 0.2 something, and about 
And that would correspond to this one, two, three, four samples here. And then the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, that would be five, six, seven, eight. They go from about 0.5 up to about 0.8. And indeed, we see here, this goes from about 0.5 up to about 0.8. And so again, this is taking these chunks of four samples and outputting them at 4x the slower rate all in parallel. All right, so that can be tricky. Um, but once you understand it, it's pretty easy to get used to so you can make the proper uh, call on our scope. So this would be the what I'll call the visualization ambiguity or interpretation when it comes to using frames versus samples. There's also processing. If we had some math in between or signal processing in between, you also have to be careful with the frame versus sample uh, interpretation there as well. And that's a subject of a follow-on video. So I will see you then.